I have a husband, <laughs> in case you don't know, his name is Tosin. Tosin and I met in 2015, we started dating in 2016, we got married in 2017. The video is all over YouTube. I've talked about it a thousand and one times, okay? So if you haven't watched it, I'll probably put it in the cards here. You can watch it after this one, okay? Okay. <laughs> So at the time we were getting ready to get married, he had a full-time job. I was paying him well. Well, you know, of course, he was just still trying to get himself together, but he had an income. I didn't have a, a regular income at the time because I didn't have a full-time job, but I was looking. I was working as a content creator and a, a TV presenter, producer, but it was part-time. So basically, I didn't have a consistent source of income, so I was looking for something full-time. To the glory of God, a few weeks, I think two to three weeks before we got married, I landed this job that I could resume immediately after getting married and it was going to pay me well, which, you know, we're very excited about. But as I mentioned earlier, at the time we were getting ready to get married, um, I was broke. <laughs> basically <laughs> and he wasn't broke because obviously he had some savings but he was a young guy just trying to get himself together so he was still putting things in place like getting an apartment you know getting the apartment painted furnished and you know buying a generator just a number of things now add to those things where the wedding expenses you know so we had a lot going on at the time such that by the time we moved into our very first apartment, not only did we not like the apartment, we also couldn't afford to furnish the apartment. And the economy became so bad at that time that Tosin's salary had to be cut not once, but twice. And in addition to his salary being cut, it was also being owed. So here we were, newly married couple. I just started my new job and, you know, we're still trying to figure ourselves out, settle into our marriage. And my husband was being owed salaries. At that time, I remember that Tosin and I would consistently tell ourselves that, wow, God saw this coming, hence why he gave me the job he gave me, because that then became, you know, I was getting paid on time. But then it became the uh, most reliable source of income that we had, you know, to put things together air. Another thing that I mentioned earlier was that we did not like the apartment. The apartment was on the island Lekki in Lagos, and it was one of those apartments that weren't well built, such that you had water coming out of the walls. Like when it rained, it was messy. You know, we tried painting and painting, it wasn't working. And then we tried applying wallpaper and the, the water would seep through the wallpaper. It was a mess. I remember that, you know, it was supposed to be a two bedroom, two bath. You know, and I'm doing like this because you, you know how, well, you might not know, but some of you might know how those houses can be, right? Those apartments in Lekki can be where they are calling this very tiny room a bedroom or well, something like that. We had to completely shut off the bathroom in the master <laughs> bedroom because it just was not it at all. It used to be like, we just completely, completely blocked it off. We never used it. We would always use the other bathroom. The water was bad it was brown you know it was just, it was just a lot going on I, I remember we walked into that apartment one day and i said to Tosin, i said we're not going to have kids in this house and i said it as a matter of fact and he looked at me he was taken aback by how powerful you know that statement was and i said to him i said you know god grants the desires of our hearts I was like, look at this house. I don't want to bring a baby, a child into this house. I don't want to be worried that I have a child crawling around and he's digging his hands or she's digging her hands into all this. Like, I, and he completely understood what I was talking about. It wasn't even like we were trying to have a child at the time anyway, because <laughs> with everything that was going on with our finances, holding off on having a child was just like, the thing for us to do and that was what we agreed to do to wait i've also talked about that on the channel so let's not rehash that again <laughs> point being that our finances at the time 
weren't things to write home about, you know. But God is such a gracious God because we were eating well, we were sleeping well, you know, we would go to church, we would dance. You know how they say that, thank God that we don't look like what we are going through. That was our testimony at that time because as far as we're concerned, as far as our friends, our family were concerned, we were a newly married couple in their honeymoon phase, <laughs> you know, and that was what they saw. But for us, it was a very, the first year was a very peculiar period for us because we we're also trying to navigate marriage together, you know, and as they say, the first year of marriage is usually one of the hardest years because you're just stepping into it and trying to figure it out. So missed all of that we had financial struggles and i remember vividly because we could only afford one chair just because i needed to shoot youtube videos and so someone's like okay let's just do one chair that you can sit on to shoot your videos and then we'll figure out the remaining later and that was what we were able to do if i have any video i which i do i have on my movie channel i'll just post some here just so you can see what it looks like so at the time you know people didn't know i never did a house tour so people didn't know what the situation was i guess people might have even assumed that maybe i was sitting in my filmy room <laughs> meanwhile that was our living room once you entered you saw everything you know i practically turned our living room into a studio because it was empty anyway so another thing during that year was that tosin did not like us having guests over he did not like us you know having friends over it because it was like where are they going to sit it just it just was never comfortable with it and i remember i had to have a conversation with him i was like listen number one i, I don't have a lot of friends if my friends are going to come around i'm going to let them come around and i said and then i said number two is that i don't keep friends around me that are judgmental i don't have because i don't have a lot of friends i'm very peculiar you know i'm very dead did i say peculiar i'm very deliberate i'm very intentional about the type of friends i have the, the type of people i share my life with so i told him that the friends i have are friends that are going to come visit me and sit on the floor happily if that is where i'm sitting that there are no ones that you know snicker behind your back or make jest of you or gossip about no 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 i don't keep such people around me to the glory of god i'm blessed in a number of ways and i can say to the glory of god i'm blessed with people that are good and genuine people and i am ever grateful for that in that season of our lives i remember that i did so many things to build up my husband because i knew his hesitation to having friends over it wasn't because he didn't like our friends it was because he wasn't happy he wasn't satisfied with our living situation at the time and he didn't want to share it with other people and i understood that as a man who is the head of a home he must have been feeling quote and unquote inadequate you know because of the different financial struggles we were going through so i spent a lot of time during that year building up my husband just building him up by prayer building him up you know with words building him up with his job just constantly encouraging him constantly letting him know how happy i am but you know all of this was possible also because of god and because i understood the person i was married to and i knew he wasn't a lazy man you know day in day out i saw how hard he was working at his job how hard he was working at improving himself trying to better himself trying to trying to provide for our home even with what he had coming in i saw the kind of man that he was in fact Justin will tell you that i said to him you know that listen i know you you're not a lazy man you know me i'm not a lazy woman this right here this is not the end we are just getting started and we will move. <laughs> that was the attitude that I had. That was the spirit that we had. That was, that it, 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 ah, 
if we, this is where we are right now, we are going to live here with rejoicing and thanksgiving. I'm not going to hide. I'm not going to quit YouTube just because I don't want to show my house. I'm, and even at the time, I wasn't doing lifestyle content. I was still like very much into, although Riesha wasn't born then, I was still very much into my movie content. So it was just like strictly movie, you know, red carpet events type of content I was creating. The little bits that you saw of our home was just, you know, whenever I sat to whatever you saw behind me and that was it, right? So, but at the same time, I wasn't ashamed to show that. I wasn't ashamed to share of myself. I had been doing that long before I met my husband. I'm not going to disappear now. I have people that have been following me since I opened my very first YouTube channel, you know, and they're still here and they're part of the journey, part of the growth. So I wasn't ashamed to show up as I was. Take me as I am or go away. If you're not happy with it, if you're not comfortable with it, where I am right now, on the way to where I am going to, then you're not my audience. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I'm not going to force you to stay. I'm not going to let you run me into a cave or to go into hiding just because, you know, I'm not in a mansion or a 10 bedroom apartment. And to the glory of God, we went through that one year. By the end of that first year, I'd left my job, my full-time job, and Tosin had gotten a much, incredibly much better job in Abuja which necessitated our move from Lagos to Abuja that year. I'd left my job so it was easy for me to move, just pack up the apartment. In fact, Tosin left like a few months before I finally joined him because he had to, you know, settle in Abuja, look for an apartment for us and all of that. So whilst he was in Abuja trying to do all of that, I was in Lagos. I remember we shot a movie, you know, and then I packed up the apartment. I came to the U.S., visited with my parents for a bit, you know, so... We, 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 we had a plan in place and, and he was looking for homes for us in Abuja and he would call me, oh, do you like this one? Ah, do you like this one? You know, by the time, by the time he found our house in Abuja at that time and he sent me pictures and videos, I told him, this is it. <laughs> this is it were we buying no we were still going to rent however it was thousands and thousands of miles away from where we were coming from from where we stayed in lagos so i loved that house i did a house tour as well then it was in abuja that oloriesha was born it was in abuja that we got pregnant with our son uluan loni me it was in abuja that so many incredible things happened like started to spring forth in our lives but if you had seen us or met us in abuja you would not have understood the one year we had in lagos prior to that and we got pregnant oh my god it was just increase here increase on all sides for us my channel Oluwe show was doing very well you know it was just so many things going great and then you know covid happened i was here we we're going to have our baby and we had that distance and covid affected us in his job it wasn't laid off or anything but you know it became a situation of we so many uncertainties that you know we weren't even sure what was going on and what was going to happen. All of these in the middle of me being pregnant with our child and thereafter having our child, Tosin couldn't be here for the birth, you know, the delivery of our child. He had to join via WhatsApp video call, you know, so it was a loss. One way or another, we ended up here in Houston, Texas <laughs> and with a baby. A brand new baby <laughs> that's a few months old and very very little savings back in a one-bedroom apartment that we were not happy with but we were happy with let me explain I remember when we moved into that, that apartment that night the very first night I cried I was hurt we had gone through our first year of marriage, incredibly difficult year. And then we had gone into our second year and things were looking great. And here we were in our third year and it was as if we took steps backward, you know. 
and now we even have a baby, we have a child that we're responsible for, and in an apartment where, I remember I told Tosin that night, I said to him, I said, even when I was single, I didn't stay in this type of apartment. I remember I said that to him. And that statement hurt him. He didn't like it. Because for him, it was a new beginning for us, you see. We were starting afresh in Houston, Texas. You know, we were going to go on this journey, just build all over again, you know, do whatever we could. And that was, that was the angle it was coming from. So it took us having that conversation that night. I apologized to him. You know, I started to see it was so into my feelings and my emotions that I was blinded by those things and I couldn't see the fresh start that God was giving us. But after that conversation that night in that room, I apologized and I said I was sorry. I didn't mean it like that. And we prayed. And with rejoicing and thanksgiving, we continued on. We pressed on. Was I vlogging? Yes. Was Oloyesha thriving? Yes. Was I showing different parts of the apartment? Yes. Was I ashamed at any point of where we were living? No. Our son turned one year in that apartment and we had a party, okay? We had a party. We invited people over. The people that could come came and they celebrated with us. There was nothing for me to be ashamed about. Because you know what? You are on your way to where God is taking you to. Where you are right now is not where you are ever, ever, ever going to be. As long as you keep moving, as long as you keep taking th those steps, as long as you keep moving. If you've been with us on this channel for a while, then you'd know that. My husband went through another one year and three months or four months of not having a job. One year or three, he should do that video by himself one day when he has the time. <laughs> but he's at work right now. That's why he can't be here to do this video with me. But he went through another, that was, that, that was an incredible, he still says he's going to write a book about it because it was an incredibly difficult period where I was working full time. I was doing YouTube. I was working a full time job. We had a baby. So it was all a situation of, I have to take care of my family. My family is my family. So, you know. I have to do what I have to do, right? And I love my family, you know, I have to take care of my family. And in that season, again, I saw how difficult it was for him. I saw how he struggled. I saw how, you know, he, he was dependent on God and how he was anticipating, you know, that breakthrough and that job that was going to come. But we worked in faith a lot because by the time, before our one year lease was up in that apartment, we were already declaring that we weren't going to renew. By the time the lease was up, he still hadn't gotten a job. But guess what? We still moved. <laughs> we still we moved though. We moved from that apartment into a three bedroom apartment that was some people's mortgage. <laughs> that was where we moved to by faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. Our son was very robust, you know, full chicks, everything. You won't know that, you know. <laughs> And Tosin was just all about as long as we're happy and, you know, we're moving. And he was doing his very best. He was working hard. You know, so there was, no, there was no reason why I shouldn't trust him. There was no reason. Because he was working hard. Day in, day out. Sleepless nights. Applying for jobs. Praying for, to God for his blessing. Just taking steps to ensure that next step for us. And by the time the job came, it was a miracle. A year and three months later, it was a miracle. It was an incredible miracle, you know? And of course, that also marked a shift in our lives, in our plans, in our finances. Here we are today, almost six years or five and a half years to be exact, after we started this journey. I haven't gone through the ups and the downs, various houses, various moves, various apartments, various experiences, to a point where we are able to own our own home. When we started this whole process, we didn't even have <laughs> We didn't even have 3% of our down payment. <laughs> we didn't have the money. 
But well, we shall start. You know, we we'll start and then we we'll start calculating. Okay, by the time I do this, 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 by the time we do this, 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 we do this, we do this, we do this, 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 Okay, okay, okay. It's so all add up. I've said so many things throughout this video. I've talked about how I handle different situations. I've talked about Tosin's attitude through the different situations. So I really hope that you are able to find hope in our journey and find encouragement in our journey that God keeps his word and he always comes through. He always does. And that God is going to bless you with that increase if only you would keep moving. Just keep going. Keep pressing as much as you can. You know, keep going. Keep taking those steps. Keep pressing on with those applications. You know, keep trusting God for that child. Keep trusting God for your own home, for your own house. Keep trusting God. Keep trusting God. Like I always say, if it's not God that is going to do it, who is going to do it for you? It's only God. Bible says that the gift of God make it rich and adds no sorrow to it. It is not God that you will go to for something and he will bless you and he will now say you have to wake up at 12 midnight and then you have to shout seven times. And then after shouting seven times, you cannot eat egg, you cannot eat fish, you cannot greet a woman first thing in the morning. That's not God. The gift of God make it rich and adds no sorrow. It adds no headache to it. Now we are in our own home to the glory of God. To the glory of God. Are we, you know, able to furnish everything right now? No! You know, not, I mean, not yet. <laughs> but what are we doing? We're taking it a day at a time. Because we are waking up and sleeping in the goodness of God, in the testimony, in the evidence that God is good all the time. So find hope. This is even a story of my journey from when we got married to today. This is not a story of my journey from when I was single, which some of you all know. You know, from being in the U.S., moving to Nigeria, the struggle. I think I even saw that video on YouTube where I was crying. I was like, so much connection to me. It's been a long journey. And I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. You people, I'm not there yet. You know, I'm not there yet. You, you, you know. <laughs> you know that I'm not there yet. You know that I'm not there yet, but it's okay. I am moving. I'm taking steps. I'm moving. Abby, I'm doing the best I can per time, moving, trusting God for his increase and celebrating the increase when it comes. It will be happening to other people in one week, in two weeks. That's great. Let it happen to me when God has proposed it to happen to me. Don't work with other people's clocks. Don't be obsessed with other people's timing. Trust God that in your life, it will make all things beautiful in his time. And your light will shine in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. Are you subscribed to the channel? If you're not, do so right now. I hope this story inspired you, encouraged you, gave you hope. If it did, then please share your thoughts, comments in the comment section. You know, don't keep it to yourself. Don't keep me to yourself as well. Share me with your loved ones, especially if you're in the U.S. Please, you people, if you're in the U.S., my Instagram needs U.S. audience greatly, mightily. Help me. Share me. <laughs> please. Tell your people that in the U.S. to so follow me. You, okay, you will think I'm joking. It's okay. It's no problem. It's no problem. It's no problem. God is good. Thank you so much for watching. I love you so much. I can't wait to see you again very, very soon. I pray God blesses you, your homes, your marriages, your relationships. Most importantly, I pray God blesses you. Remaining God and God bless you. Bye. <laughs>